In this video, we're going to look at implied yield on coupon bonds. Let's just get right to the example. You'll see what the words mean uh, when, we, when we look at the example. Uh, you're given that the annual yield on zero coupon bonds with a duration of K years is I sub K equals 0 0.03 plus 0 0.005 times K minus 1. All right, we'll come back to that statement. Uh, let's determine the annual yield for a three-year bond with 5% annual coupons that is consistent with this term structure of interest rates. Okay, so there's a lot there. Let's kind of unwind some stuff. Okay, so now we're talking about zero coupon bonds here. It says the annual yield, the first sentence says the annual yield on zero coupon bonds with a duration of K years. Uh, so with a zero coupon bond, uh, it, a zero coupon bond is exactly what it says. It's a bond where there are no coupons. And so the timeline is going to look like this. Uh, if it's a K year bond, uh, you just got a redemption value. You don't have any coupons. You only, you're only getting a redemption value. Now, let me make a comment before we move on about the Macaulay duration of such a zero coupon bond. Remember how we would calculate the Macaulay duration of, a, of, a, of any set of payments is you take the time of the payment. It, it's a process that you go through. So let me write down the formula. Or for in, in this case, this is what the formula would reduce to because with this zero coupon bond, I only have the one payment. So it's, it, it's this process and the numerator take the time of the payment Payment, times the payment amount itself and then discount that back to time zero. So that's that expression in the numerator. And in the denominator, you just take the present value of the payments. And so that's what's in the denominator here. Of course, the uh, everything cancels off here except the K. So the Macaulay duration here is is equal to a K. So in the context that you're that you see a zero coupon bond, if we're in this context of zero coupon bond, and and I'm gonna highlight the word duration. They say the word duration here. They just mean the the Macaulay duration. It it, it really is the Macaulay duration uh, of of a uh, of the bond. So if you have a zero coupon bond. Uh, with duration of K years, that really is, that duration is the Macaulay duration of the bond. Okay, different words you might see instead of duration, you might see uh, with a maturity of K years, so the bond matures in K years, maturity uh, date is when the redemption value is paid, remember, might say that it has a term of K years, term that, that's, when it says term, we're using term in the same context of this term structure of interest rates. So there's different ways that you may see this thing worded, but, um, but it all means that uh, the redemption value is going to be paid at, at time K. Okay, so that's our uh, that's our setup, and then uh, we have a price for this bond, and and so the the present value of the redemption value. The remember the price is just the present value of, of the uh, of the redemption value. So in this case, the uh, uh, the price is the time zero value that's equivalent to the time k value of cap r, and and how would you accumulate or discount between those two things? Well, you would do so using the uh, annual yield on the zero coupon bond but we also know that that's exactly in this context the you know when you when you accumulate or discount between time zero and time k you do so using the k year spot rate and so uh in other, in other words the term structure of interest rates in this example uh, if, if you're wondering where is the term structure of interest rates in this example, the term structure of interest rates is given as the annual yield on zero coupon bonds. So uh, the annual yield on a zero coupon bond uh, with a duration of K years is exactly the K year spot rate. And so that's, uh, that's what's shown in this, in this picture. Okay, so let's go back to our problem and let's pluck out then some of the spot rates. So the one year spot rate would be plug in a one for K and that I uh, I sub K expression, uh, the one year spot rate is just going to be 3%. The two year spot rate, plug in a two for K and you'll get a 3.5% as the two year spot rate. Likewise, the three year spot rate is going to be a 4%. And that's all I need because the second sentence says I'm looking for the, uh, uh, the annual yield for a three year bond. So I don't need to go any further than three year, uh, three year spot rates a three-year bond. Now I'm looking at a coupon bond, one that actually has coupons. Now, uh, it doesn't say anything about the redemption value here, uh, and so I have to assume that it's redeemable at par, and also it doesn't say anything about the par value, about the face value of the bond. So let's just kind of look at generally uh, what, what the timeline would look like with a general capital F as the face value. I don't know that it's a 1,000 face value bond or a 100 face value bond. Let's just, let's just do, it, do the timeline generally, and this is what, what, you, should, what you should get. 
the the coupons. It's got five percent coupons, uh, annual coupons. So uh, after one year, I get a coupon of point uh, zero five times the face amount, and after two years and three years, I get the same coupon amount. And then at the end of year three, it's a three year bond. So at the end of year three, I get the redemption value, which I'm assuming is the face value. Okay, and now the question is, well, what's the price? So, uh, well, that's not the question. The question is determine the annual yield for for a three year bond. Uh, when you see that word, the annual yield for a three-year bond with 5% annual coupons or, or something to that effect, um, what they're asking you to calculate is the, uh, the AEIR, uh, uh, well, we, it's the annual yield in the context of the annual yield from Module 3. Okay, so uh, I'll come back to that statement in just a second. So we're going we're gonna to calculate the annual yield by looking at different ways to price this bond. So on the one hand, I could price this bond using the term structure of interest rates. And so I would discount the payment at time one, the 0.05F payment at time one, I would discount from time one back to time zero. I would do that by multiplying by a V sub one. The payment at time two, I need to multiply by a V sub two squared. And then the payment at time three, and I'll just group the whole payment at time three as a one plus 0 0.05 or 1.05 cap F, I need to discount that from time three back to time zero, and I do that by multiplying by a V sub three Q. All right, so now on the other hand, I could price this bond like I did in module three using the standard pricing formula, assuming that I have a flat yield curve. That's basically what, it's, what, it, what that assumption is. Uh, I made that comment in a previous video that everything up to this point, all, all of modules one, two, and three, we we were uh, essentially assuming a, a flat yield curve. And so uh, what, is the, what is that interest rate for that flat yield curve? So I priced this bond using the standard pricing formula. And uh, so in that case, I would get 0 0.05 cap F times an A angle three plus a cap F times a V uh, cubed, where V is with respect to whatever that annual yield rate is. All right, uh, so that's the equation that I want to solve. And the first thing I recognize is this equation doesn't depend on what the, the value of cap F is. All the cap Fs are going are to cancel off. And so that's why it wasn't given to me in the problem is that because it, it, was all, uh, it, all, it all cancels off. Uh, what I would do, you don't have to do this, but what I want to do here is I want to clear out the fractions. So let's multiply the whole equation by 100 to clear out the fractions. And the equation I'm trying to solve then is this equation uh, that I have shown now. So I want to solve that equation. I'll get to that in just a second. But before I do, I want to go back to a, another way that I could get to the same, uh, to the same uh, equation. Uh, so let's talk about that. Uh, I'm back to you know pricing this thing, this this bond at uh, you know two different ways. One way using the uh, the term structure of interest rates, and the other way using the standard pricing formula. And uh, I see the equation, or I see the timeline that I have. If I can recognize that the the bond, uh, that my answer will not depend on what the face amount is, well, what I can do then is just assume the face amount is any value I want to. So let's assume the face amount is, is 100, say, and then uh, that would clear out all these decimals. The, the, time, the, the payment amounts at times one, two, uh, the coupon amounts, uh, I should say, are just going to be five in this case, and then the redemption value would be 100. And then when I price this thing using the um, term structure of interest rate, I need to discount the payment at time one time uh, uh, but, uh, from time one back to time zero by multiplying by a V sub one. Uh, the payment at time two, I discount by multiplying by a V sub two squared. The payment at time three, I, uh, I discount by multiplying by a V sub three cubed. And then I set that equal to the standard pricing formula, which would be a five times an A angle three plus a 100 times V sub I cubed. So that's the equation that I want to solve. The left-hand side, uh, I'm going to have to do some, some calculations on the left-hand side. So uh, on the left-hand side, I've, I've got uh, the V sub 1 is the V value with respect to a one-year spot rate. So that's a 1 over the 1.03. Uh, likewise, the V sub 2 squared is... Uh, I'm using the two-year spot rate of 3.5%. So the V sub 2 squared is 1 over 1.035 squared. And then, and then I can extend that. Now, the left-hand side is nothing more than a numeric calculation. So just do your numeric calculation there. On the right-hand side, I'm trying to solve that equation for I. 
It's, uh, I don't know how else to do it except to use the time value money buttons on your calculator. This is just a compute I question. Uh, you know, you, you know the price of the bond now, you know the end value is three, the payments, uh, uh, the, you got payments of five, four, uh, future value 100, you got a, uh, a present value, use the correct plus minus signs in places, compute I, and I got an I value of about a 3.967%. Okay, so that is the, uh, the annual yield rate for a three-year bond with 5% annual coupons that's consistent with this, this the given term structure of interest rates. All right, well, I will see you in the next video.